Hello everyone, this is Recap Revelations. Today we're entering the fascinating world of the film Sudden Death. Warning, fresh spoilers ahead. Hold on tight, keep an eye out for the exciting adventure, and enjoy the ride. The movie begins around a terrifying and dangerous fire that the fire department tries to put out in every way, saving a little girl trapped on the second floor, a firefighter named Darren, who is trapped under the fire's rubble, finds her and even hold her in his hand while he is trapped under the rubble. She cries and he tries to call for help for rescue. At the same time, the fiery wooden beam collapses over them and other firefighters arrive to rescue them as the air is running out. Both of them finally discovered, but the little girl did not survive the fire and eventually dies, causing Darren to be stunned at that moment by losing the girl. Two years later, this is the day of the game, the Stanley Cup and the championship game in ice hockey. These are the Pittsburgh Penguins against the Chicago Blackhawks who are going to compete for the title. Four hours before the intended confrontation and the opening blow, hard security arrangements are made by Hallmark, the head of the Secret Service, in the most strict manner at the event as the vice president also arrives to be present at the game and raises the threshold of excitement even further a road services company is parked next to the stadium and marks the car of the security services company for the event called horizon to wait for the entrance until confirmed to the scene seconds later a car collides with it from behind in force they apologize and tell an excuse that the dog is missing and they look for it but as soon as they approach them they are quickly caught by them and murdered quickly to steal their security tags for the event. At the same time, Darren arrives to visit his son Tyler, who is happy to see him and informs him that he has received a new hockey bat. It is Tyler's birthday and although this is not his custody time, he turns to his ex-wife Kate and tells her that he has extraordinarily surprised the children and bought them tickets for the championship game that is going to happen today. Kate angry at Darren denies it under the pretext that they are supposed to have dinner. At that moment Emily, Darren's daughter comes running into his arms and declares her love for her father. He works at the stadium today as a fire marshal during the game. This makes his children wonder if he has returned to work after the event that happened two years ago. Katie on second thought confirms the matter and he on his part promises her that it will not be repeated. A group of dangerous and cruel terrorists make final arrangements for the event while they step up the weapons and load up all the necessary equipment Joshua Foss the leader orders five minutes to start the entrance they quickly leave the scene and the stopwatch explodes immediately at the end of the countdown two hours before the game opens Hallmark makes sure in the kitchen with Andrew the head chef that no one will enter without his sole permission Andrew's wife chef Mrs. Ferreira who is taking care of the garden at the same time receives an unexpected visit from an uncertain person. 90 minutes before the game, Darren, Emily, and Tyler enter the stadium gates at gate 5, and immediately afterward the Joshua terrorists under the uniforms of the security company. Emily will get a chance to meet the penguin AC mascot, who is actually Joan in a smiling doll costume in the form of a friendly penguin. Darren gives Tyler a special chance to get to know the Penguins' teammates, who are confident that they will win. Tyler Luke gets to meet Rubidoux and Brad Tolliver, whom he gets face-to-face -face and is thrilled to see for the first time. 45 minutes before face-off, Tyler meets Joan, this time in the form of AC, along with Emily, as she rushes to the stands to fill her role in the team. 20 minutes before the fateful confrontation, the vice president's entourage arrives at the stadium and is greeted with a standing ovation on her way to the dressing room. The vice president successfully welcomes the teams and continues toward the VIP box in the stadium. Mrs. Ferrara, Andrew's wife, is carefully guarded by a hired killer of Joshua, who asks her to call her husband Andrew the head chef to inform him that her life is in danger and he must follow their instructions otherwise she will be killed and 30 seconds later he permits Joshua Foss and his men to reluctantly step inside while they are serving food in their hands and a smile of triumph. Electricity is in the air and the Stanley Cup is about to occur while the crowd swarms and teams train for the game. 
Two minutes before the beginning of the game, during the singing of the national anthem, a hostile takeover is carried out by Joshua's team at the entrance to the box. Mrs. Ferrara loses her life quickly in her house, and Joshua takes over the vice president's box at the same time, killing every target in his way. Soon after the takeover, Joshua murders several government officials, killing Andrew the master chef, the reason that he would not be left alone. It is not clear what his intentions are for now, and he jokes at the expense of the vice president trying to figure out what his real motive is. But Joshua would rather have their headphones shut up and thrown away while he quickly destroyed them. 17 minutes before the end of the first third of the special ice confrontation, Darren breaks up with Emily and Tyler in order to get his job done in the game, warning them not to leave their seats in the stands. The Penguins move into the lead at first, and the crowd cheers, while in the meantime Joshua explains the real goal he reached for the game, which is money, and a lot of it, a billion and seven hundred million dollars, he said, should pass during the game time in each third of the game, to the bank accounts he chose, and if not transferred, the hostages will be gradually eliminated, as well as in the event that they do not pass the money at all, he will kill all the stadium's residents at the end of the game. Hallmark, the head of the Secret Service, understands how horrendous a mistake they made that they lost the vice president to a group of terrorists, but now it's too late. Two minutes into the first third of the game and the Chicago Blackhawks tie the score, Tyler and Emily quarrel over what Darren means as a firefighter, and Tyler manages to smuggle her out that he splashes water on her and she runs away quickly, while he yells at her from afar that she must return to the seat because of Darren's instructions. The first third of the game is over, and money has not passed, so Joshua decides to unscrupulously eliminate the mayor's wife as she has not stopped sobbing and making noise. At the same time, Emily enters for comfort and meets AC, but while she is reading his name, the rest of the toilet opens on her and Joan's body lands right beside her. Emily tries to escape unsuccessfully and is caught by the murderous puppet, while Darren understands Tyler that Emily has escaped from him when suddenly he discovers her along with AC and begins a pursuit of them. The new AC cruelly sails her way with Emily to the president's box, handing her over to Joshua, while Emily praises her father for his role in the stadium as a fire officer and resolutely promises that he will reach her at all costs. Still, during the break of the first trimester, Darren meets AC again and quickly recognizes that it is not Joan. He finds himself in a most dangerous and violent battle with Carla, a most evil assassin, in the Penguin's mascot costume. They fight in the entire kitchen, from the meat grinder, the boiling fry pot, through the meat hammer, and finally with the last power he sends her with a strong kick straight to the dishwasher, in which she is forced to surrender and face her death. At the same time, Hallmark is having a conversation with Joshua to make sure people are counting live in the box, and gets further clarification on the demands and expectations for receiving the money by the end of the game. Darren summons the chief security guard who also turns out to be part of Joshua's team and attacks him suddenly, from whom he tries to extort basic information, he discovers that they have taken over the president's box, and they had trapped the entire stadium with bombs that could knock it down at any given moment, another surprising attempt at resistance coming from the security guard, and Darren was stuffing a bone in the security guard's throat in order to remove the threat. A second third of the game takes place and the Chicago Blackhawks take the lead over the Penguins. In the 13th minute, Darren finds Jones' body and finds a phone to call the police and report the incident, and at the same time he tells the terrible facts to Hallmark, who updates him that they are still assessing the situation without taking any action. As they talk, cars explode in the parking lot in front of Hallmark, who looks in shocked eyes and recommends that Darren wait for their mark while Darren knows that this is the moment he must find and start dismantling the bombs in the stadium. At the same time, the vice president recognizes that Joshua is critical of the poor security in the stadium he broke out in, that he is on vacation from a fake department in the administration, and he simply preferred to accept what he could not spend on the service. Darren sketches the locations of the bombs and takes the equipment needed to handle the mission. The Secret Service is trying to penetrate the dome of the stadium with a helicopter from above in order to land troops and quickly shot down by two deadly missiles from afar by a rocket launcher with extreme ease while the combat personnel fall to their deaths. 
an 11th minute in the second third of the championship, the Penguins compare and return to the game, Darren hides in the stadium from Joshua's men, and an ice clearance truck arrives directly at the Secret Service post outside packed with bodies quickly rolling out. Six minutes to the end of the second third, and Joshua realizes that he is dealing with a different opponent than usual, who tends to be a hero by his past. At the same minute the pressure to find Darren rises, but he manages to locate the first bomb and neutralize it afterward. The second third of the game ends, and money does not go according to expectations, so Joshua eliminates another hostage, threatening to kill another one while he is joking at the expense of all the box occupants. He activates the fireworks over the stadium sky. Darren tries to send a message through the neon board from the outside and say that the whole place is booby-trapped in C4 and he will try to neutralize it, but very quickly the huge neon board distantly destroyed in a massive explosion before continuing to update on more details. Darren makes more improvised ammunition on the way and moves on as he manages to locate another bomb and neutralize it as well. He meets with double resistance from two other members of Joshua's crew. He fights and kills one when Hallmark terminates the other. Hallmark tries to catch on to Darren's action plan, and Darren explains to him the strategic locations in the stadium he relied on while updating him on his son Tyler's location in the stadium. Shots are surprisingly fired and Darren runs away. 19 minutes into the third trimester, a lot of money is starting to pass, and Joshua explains to the vice president how he can enjoy the money after another double transfer process until he disappears under the surveillance system. Hallmark is revealed to be a major traitor when he shares with Joshua the facts about Darren, who began locating the bombs in the stadium and criticizes him for missing the chance to eliminate Darren because of his men, finally is asked by Joshua to bring Darren's son Tyler to him. Minute 16 into the final third of the game Hallmark tries his best to convince Tyler to come with him but falls on his tongue causing Tyler to stay in place even as he hears legends that Hallmark is from the Secret Service. Darren meanwhile manages to locate another bomb while updating Hallmark which has neutralized only four bombs and make him realize that he is an easy target because he is completely alone. A weapon is pulled out by Hallmark, and Darren on the other side does not lose time and burns and eliminates it altogether that feels threatened. Darren manages to get a hand on Joshua's main comms following the assassination of Hallmark and calls him in order to understand the number of people in the box, which he receives from his daughter Emily right away. In the exact same conversation, Darren makes the new rules of the game while he makes it clear that Joshua has the bomb and the hostages with the possibility of getting the money and winning, and he has the opportunity to find and neutralize all the bombs and win as well, and the first to stop the second will win. Eleven minutes left in the third trimester of the game, tension in the stands mounts, and the Penguins take the lead by another point, Darren for now finds another bomb and defuses it, while the Blackhawks in the ninth minute are re-equated that they return to play in the third goal, and the Penguins' Brad Tolliver Scholl retires as he can no longer function, which he is replaced by Ken Raggett. Eight minutes into the end of the third trimester, Joshua steps onto Darren's location, who quickly begins to escape Joshua's men scouring the stand he's in to find him. The pressure to find Darren rising, Darren escapes and hides between the crowd. He finds Brad Tolliver in the locker room and wears his squad uniform and in a brave move he himself takes to the field when he returns as Brad Tolliver and is forced to take the field when asked. Confused and unfocused in the goal, he hopes they won't move towards him and score him a goal. He manages to stop a huge blow in the last minute with his hand when he is all breathing and gasping and gets the cheers of the audience and commentators that praise him, and from afar he gives his love to his son Tyler in an emotional embrace which crosses all the hearts of the crowd which he realizes is his father down there at the hockey field. He retires from the field while punching a player from the competing team and continues on, killing a number of other enemies who pass in his path without hesitation so as not to waste any unnecessary time. While the third game is about to end and minutes run quickly back, the tension rises and screams in the air as the seconds run out, Robital in the last second compare the score, and we have sudden death extension time. What gives everyone including Darren and Joshua more leeway, with Joshua smiling with satisfaction. 
Darren decides it's time to take action and starts climbing up to the stadium dome to penetrate it from above, reaching its peak, and after a tedious craft manages to fight with Joshua's guard, neutralizing him. Darren opens the stadium ceiling and he encounters another enemy he fights with on the edge of the dome, while he eventually throws him down towards the field. He clings a little bit to a large lamp and immediately drops unexpectedly afterward on the points board, causing a huge explosion of the board and a terrible panic in the entire stadium as a result of it. Darren is spotted by the crowd in the hall gliding through the omega of one of the light lanterns directly into the president's box, which he blasts from above in order to infiltrate, neutralize Joshua's team, and finally save Emily, the vice president, and the remaining hostages as Joshua quickly slips away. A terrible panic at the stadium occurs, while Darren walks up with Emily to pick up Tyler who hugs him warmly when he feels him. A few minutes later Darren receives an invitation to meet the vice president but Emily quickly discovers Joshua, dressed quite differently with her stamp, and rushes to call him. Darren chases Joshua up the roof steps of the stadium dome, starting a dangerous battle with Joshua, which he loses, and has to absorb a ball for Emily, while Joshua tries to hang on it as he climbs the helicopter ladder and walks in smiling. Darren manages to hang on the ladder as well, and fires directly into the cockpit a number of shots that kills the pilot instantly causing the helicopter pilot to lose control of the rudders and land the helicopter directly into the stadium's ice field while it explodes everywhere as it crashes slowly with a huge blast on the ice. The film ends with Darren wounded, entering an ambulance and Tyler boasts of his father as a brave firefighter he really believes in. Sudden Death is a gripping action thriller starring Jean-Claude Van Damme. The film seamlessly blends intense combat with a suspenseful plot, delivering a visual feast of well-choreographed action sequences. The relentless pacing and steadily building tension keep viewers on the edge of their seats, culminating in a nail-biting climax. Supported by a strong ensemble cast, including Powers Booth as the menacing villain, Sudden Death is a must-watch for fans of thrilling action films. Van Damme's charismatic lead and the film's engaging narrative make it a standout in the genre, showcasing the actor at the peak of his action star prowess. If you enjoyed this recap from Recap Revelations, be sure to subscribe for a continuous stream of similar videos. Your support means the world to us, so don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks a million for tuning in.